Okay, perfect. Great, now we're all set, guys. I'm so excited for you all to be here. So this is a topic that has been coming up so much for me, and I really like to tune into the collective to see what sort of energies we're all moving through to make what I'm teaching about as helpful as possible. And I kid you not, at least three times this week, someone messaged me and they were like, oh, I'm like really struggling with like issues with my parents or I'm really struggling with like issues with my great grandmother. Like I feel all of this trauma coming up from the past. And as you guys know, this week was the full moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is a very grounding energy and Capricorn often calls for us to get everything related to our work life together, everything related to our groundedness together. So what's happening right now, if you guys have also been feeling this kind of like shift in energy and all of a sudden you're like, damn, like my mom messed me up, damn, my dad messed me up. And you're kind of like going through all of these things mentally in your head right now. It's because this is the energy that we're currently moving through right now, where there's a lot, a lot of generational healing taking place. There's a lot of traumas that are rising up for you to examine, to look at and release. So if you've been feeling this way, just like pop it in the chat, like, yo, I feel that right now, you know, because the generational healing stuff is some of the deepest shadow work that we can do. And we're going to be doing a little bit of shadow work during this workshop as well. And, um, I, you know, it's so funny because the depth of this work really comes as we're rising into our power, because literally what the universe is doing, it, it's like, yo, is this girl really ready for the next level? Is she ready for where I'm about to bring her? So there's this question that arises and it's like kind of like the universe testing you in a way and it's like are you going to be triggered by the past or are you going to step into this energy of newness this energy of allowing yourself to transform this energy of stepping into your power so this is the ultimate question so um, I wanted to introduce myself first. So for those of you who it's our first time connecting, my name is Alicia Munion and I am an intuitive coach, manifestation coach. I also host retreats internationally. I'm a licensed hypnotherapist. I help people to remove limiting blocks in their mind. And I'm also a marketing and um, advisor. So I help people step into their power through marketing online as well. And it seems like I do a lot of different things, but they all relate together. It's all about helping people to step into their power. And this is a journey that I've been on for so long as well, like really discovering myself, discovering my gifts and stepping into my own power and purpose. So um, I actually own a house in Costa Rica now. I'm in New York right now at the moment, though, and I host retreats for women in Costa Rica to help them overcome traumas and step into their power. So all of this, though, has come from me desiring to heal myself. And this is a really powerful concept because so many times, like we get stuck in our wounds, you know, we're like, oh my God, I feel trapped. I feel stuck. Um, my parents did all of this to me. I have so many traumas, you know, we trap ourselves in the victim mindset, you know, but the level of this work is about you first consciously recognizing where the victim mindset begins because once you step into the realization of where your limiting beliefs begin that's when you truly can step into your power so for me i was recognizing where the the dialogue to victimhood was repeating in my mind where the dialogue that didn't serve me was repeating in my mind and from there, I started to really recognize and follow the train of thoughts, right? Because, you know, whatever trauma you faced in your life, like everyone faces trauma. 
you know, like just being a human being, like there's so many things that can happen. And some of us have experienced more severe trauma than other people. But regardless of that, when you experience something dark, when you experience something difficult, in different ways, it creates blockages in your mind, like mental blocks that prevent you from creating abundance, from creating the life that you desire, because there's all of these dialogues of self-sabotage. There's all of these dialogues of limiting beliefs and self-doubt that, that begin to swarm your mind. So the level of this work, the level of shadow work is really about first stepping into the conscious awareness and two, identifying how you can rework your mind to better serve you, to rework these stories, to rewrite the dialogue of pain in your life, to step into a place of purpose and a place of empowerment. So that's the ultimate goal today is that we're going to really step into what your relationship of abundance is like and how we can heal that relationship by stepping into the past of our generational traumas, letting that go to step into the power that we deserve. So um, to start off, I want you guys to just message in the chat what your name is and um, what is your offering to the world? Like kind of like what um, what you do for work, if you're like a spiritual healer, what you do for that. Um, if you're just on the path to healing, you know, put that in, like what your intention is for today's class. Just taking a moment to tap into that. And just write it down in the chat where you're hopping in from. Oh, amazing. You're a certified hypnotist as well. So am I. That's amazing. This work is so good for hypnotists, you know, to help them really identify the root of those blockages. All right. We got Jeff, Long Island, currently on a healing journey. Honor to you, Jeff, and your journey. It's been a pleasure connecting to you, witnessing you at different points in your journey. Selena being stepping into her purpose. Yes, queen. As a spiritual guide and life coach. Yes, that's so powerful. Thank you so much for joining us. I feel like this will really, you know, just feeling the energy, the potency, like you have these same gifts, you know, and you're about to be holding the same space for people. So thank you so much for joining us and just absorbing to amplify and send this out to the collective. Okay, yes. Okay, we have Carrie Sales Assistant by day, medium by night. I love this. And that used to be me where I was teetering between these two personalities. I was literally in an office marketing assistant. Then at night, I was talking to dead people, you know, be like that. <laughs> But this is exactly what this is about. It's about you stepping into your power and recognizing the limiting beliefs. Because for me, what I was realizing is that I was already like so set in my business, but there was just this inherent fear of me blowing open to the next level of allowing myself to actually be this businesswoman because I was programmed from a young age. You can't do this. You have to be a doctor. You have to do this. This is what success looks like. This is who you have to be. There was so much pressure for that that it was like ingrained into my mind where I would literally stop myself like, oh, I can't post this because then other people will see it. Oh, I can't be seen in this way because like this person will judge me or my family will judge me. Oh, I can't talk about this because that like, you know, auntie don't like that, you know, like there was all of these things that were blocking me that I didn't even realize. But once I started to step into the conscious recognition of that, I was like, oh, this is actually the witch wound. This is actually me being afraid to shine my light, to shine my power because of the, the lifetimes I've been oppressed. 
this is also me afraid to shine my light, to shine my power, because when my mom was growing up in Guyana on the farm, they told her that she couldn't connect to spirits. This is actually arising because I was told as a woman that I had to be married by the age of 30 and I had to, um, I couldn't leave my house until I got married. So when I started to recognize those generational roots, oh, and this is a this is a deep one. I was recognizing that I was afraid to make money as deeply rooted because my ancestors were slaves and they were not allowed to own things. It was like literally that deep what I went into with this healing and it's layer, you know? But when you start to recognize these blockages, this is where your healing comes from because you're like, oh, how can I actually reprogram this in my mind? So literally what I did was I started doing these deeper shadow work meditations and identifying, all right, actually this trauma came from when my dad told me that I had to be a doctor. This trauma came from me when my mom told me that we didn't have enough money and that that you're not allowed to have these things. This trauma came literally ancestrally remembering and feeling that energy of being a slave and being trapped. And I'm embodying this through this. There's so many layers. And actually, there have been studies that show that our DNA contains trauma. It's such an interesting study because basically what they did was like they used mice for this study and um, they they did some sort of like trauma to the mice and then those mice passed away. Then the next generation, they did the same trauma, then those mice passed away. The next generation didn't receive any trauma, like normal life, whatever, those mice passed away. Those babies of that mice, so that's three generations down, they they were like doing something. The trauma was like something like whenever they rang this bell, they would like zap the mice or something like that. It was like something of that nature. So three generations down, they ring the bell and those same mice displayed trauma, even though nothing was happening to them. So it was somewhere wired in their brain and their subconscious through the DNA that was passed down to them that this is some sort of like traumatic event that's happening. And that's how we're programmed as well. Like sometimes we're not even consciously aware why certain things bring us fear because it could be generational. We don't recognize what our, our limitations are in our mind until we start to step into this awareness and you really start to go deep and recognize like, okay, how, uh, how is this quality that I have right now actually connected to the generations that my ancestors experience? And it can be in so many ways. There was actually this woman who was working with, because like one of the things that I do in hypnotherapy is I help the people to go back to the root of where this pain was from this woman literally saw when her ancestors were dealing with the potato famine in ireland and she was like an irish woman and she was remembering all of these things that happened and she was like wow because of that i was always in a scarcity mindset like i always felt there wasn't enough and she also had like a weird relationship with food then after this session she was able to release it because of the conscious awareness and then say to herself, I don't have to carry the pain of my ancestors. And this is the important concept that we're stepping into today because I believe there's ancestral gifts. You know, there's certain things that our ancestors gave us that are so beautiful and so embodied. There's also traumas that they give us as well. So it's important that we do this healing because if you're called to this class right now, there's no coincidence, you know, like you're the person in your family who's waking up and it's part of your responsibility to step into this energy, to step into this healing, you know, and it's not easy to be this person, you know, there's so much that you carry as the healer. So 
I'm going to be talking a little bit about the energy of money as we kind of step in a little bit more deeply into these concepts. If you guys have any questions at any point, you could pop it down in the chat and just let me know if you have any questions. Yes. Okay. So the energy of money. This is something that like learning about this completely changed my perception about how money works and our relationship with currency. So if you've ever noticed like different points in your life where you're like, oh my God, why did the money stop? Um, I just feel completely blocked when it comes to receiving, right? So what money is, people call it currency. So currency is literally a current of energy. So when you view money like this, right? A current can be drawn from one side of the plug to the other and it flows freely, right? If everything's working. But have you ever had one of those little nicks in your like iPad, you know, cord and you're like trying to move it. So like the energy is coming and it's like really broken, but you're still trying to make it work. This is when your current of energy is broken in your in your etheric field. So essentially, like when you reach a place of stagnation, it's the same concept where basically the current of energy isn't able to flow through to you. So if you find yourself like going backwards with your money where you're like suddenly like nothing in your bank account and there's like a lot happening where like you used to have people who are interested in your services and all of a sudden that's not coming in there's like all of a sudden like you have all these parking tickets and things that you have to pay for like there's some sort of blockage happening that you need to heal and going into this will literally help you to lift this up so that you can have a clear flow of energy. So the first step is you being really consciously aware of like when this is occurring and identifying the root of where that comes from. So money goes where it is welcome. So there's like a little reflection. It's like, what habits do you have that welcome in abundance? So for you to think about your relationship of money, like one of the healthiest things that you could do is have multiple streams of income. And this is something where it comes to a positive habits with money. It's like, if you don't open the doorway to money, it can't come in. So you got to let her in through multiple ways. You know, if you're a talented healer, like open the door, start, start offering it to clients. If you can do readings for other people, like open that door too. start opening it up. Because if you sit there and you're like, all right, there's no money coming in, nothing's happening. It's like, what are you doing to meet the energy of money to open that doorway? And when you start framing it like that, you're like, damn girl, I got like 12 things I could put out, you know? And it's like, when, like, sometimes we create the own, our own mental blockages. And this kind of goes back to the witch wound. If you're into this sort of spiritual work and you're like, oh, I don't actually want to like tell people that I do readings because I actually am scared that I'm going to be judged by other people. That's literally you blocking an avenue for abundance for yourself. You literally don't know who's waiting for you to share your gifts until you start to step into it. Like literally when I was in high school, I was teased for being the weird girl. You know, I was like, you know, the little emo girl in the corner, like had seen hair, all that stuff. Like I was always into weird ass shit. But let me tell you, when I started to come out as a psychic and stuff like that and fully embody myself, those people who used to make fun of me in high school, they made fun of me again as an adult. But let me tell you, as I continue to step into my power and do these healings, I kid you not, like I've read people in my high school who have bullied me now because I had to believe in myself and be so embodied that it was like, there's nothing that the universe can send me to make me doubt myself, you know? And literally they were paying me $110 for a reading, you know? And 
going from that same space, it was like me seeing the awareness because honestly, they, they didn't even remember that they used to bully me. You know what I mean? Like, it's like when you do these healings, they're so deep that it literally can tr transform people's perceptions of you as well. So it's like when you fully step into your embodiment, when you fully step into the belief of yourself, when you fully step in to the gifts the universe has given you, you know, there's no coincidence you came to a psychics abundance class, like you have your own energy, you have your own gifts, you have your own power. When you fully step into this awareness and step into the empowerment of what you can do, that's you fully owning that abundance channel. And there was so many moments, like I said, of doubt before I step into this. Let me tell you, I had this thing in 2018, and I was like, yo, I'm going to do readings. January 2018, I'm going to do readings. I'm going to do readings. January, February, March, I'm going to do readings. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it out. I'm going to put it out. That didn't come out until 2019 in December because I had so much to work through, you know? And it's like, if those ideas have been circulating in your mind and you haven't acted on them yet, don't be hard on yourself because maybe there's something that needs to happen. Maybe there's something you need to heal, but this is also a tap on the shoulder to finally do the thing. You know, you're here for a reason. And here's the thing, like even in 2019, when I launched it, my perfectionist mind was coming. I was like, oh my God, what if people judge me? What if people this? What if people that? Let me tell you, they did judge me. They did judge me. I got judged by my family. I got judged by this. I got judged by that. But at the end of the day, too, after all of that, and I cleared out all of that noise, abundance, clients, bought my dream house in Costa Rica in one year. This is the potential that waits for you when you stop limiting yourself because of the fear of being judged by others because of the fear of what's inside of you because of the fear of that generational trauma it's so crazy like there's been so many times now working with my business partner so we both own soul master university and this is essentially where we host all of our programs all of our courses all of our retreats through um, there's been so many times where we've reached like a standstill in our business where we literally, you know, we've had um, six figure years and there's times where literally no money's coming in. And then we both need to look at ourselves and be like, what's coming up right now? And it's literally generational trauma, literally layers of trauma that are still coming up. And that's the thing is like when you're in this work, it's consistent. It never stops. You're going to reach peaks of abundance and there's going to be times where it stops again. And you need to go back and identify the roots. Like for me, one of the things that came up was like basically healing this wound from a parent that promised me a certain amount of money, you know, and they were like, all right, when you get into college, I'm going to give you this amount of money. And, um, when I finally went to them and I was like, okay, like I got in, this is my, you know, acceptance letter. Um, so happy, you know, I'm in the back of my mind, I was like, are you going to support me? You know, but they literally told me to my face that they're not going to give me anything. Good luck. This in my little 18 year old mind created a trauma where I felt unsupported. I felt like I didn't deserve money. I felt like um, my support beams were taken out from me. All of these things were then programmed into my mind from that moment. But then you forget about it. You know, you keep going on with life because that's what we do. But what you don't realize is on a spiritual, on an energetic level, and on a psychological level, you're literally ingraining this trauma into your mind that displays itself in different ways. So through this healing that I did through hypnotherapy, I recognized that, oh my God, I feel like when my clients are paying me money that I don't deserve this money because of this trauma that happened. And I'm creating a block for myself. That's literally how it goes. Oh my God, I didn't put out this offering that I have because I'm scared that I'm going to be judged, that I'm going to be bullied, that my parents won't accept me. 
these are all of the things that can come up in your relationship with money. And it's important to recognize where these blockages come from. So um, another part in turning your relationship with money positive is writing affirmations. Like, how are you speaking with money? What is your what is your relationship like? So this is also so, so psychologically and subconsciously part of reworking your dialogue with money. What is the subconscious dialogue with money like? So for you to identify how you're currently speaking about money, if you're like literally saying all the time, there's never enough, I'm always in debt, this and this and this, cycling that through your mind, that's going to be what you attract. So for you to shift that in your mind and you're like, oh, I deserve abundance. Abundance comes easily to me. Clients love to give me money because I help them. I love to um, help other people make money. Like starting to redefine your money affirmations is such a powerful practice because literally on a psychological level, it helps you to reprogram this dialogue in your mind. So what I recommend right now, if you guys have a pen and paper, I want you to take a moment and just write down like five affirmations for money that you want to embody. And I'm actually going to do the same because, you know, you always got to rework your, your dialogue based on what you're going through right now. So just take a moment and write down five affirmations for money for yourself. Okay, perfect. Yay. Yeah, and take your time, you know. If you guys want to pop in or share one and you want, even want to put one in the comments, you could totally do that too. Okay, the one that, um, the ideas that I fulfill bring me money. I help my clients to make an, an ample amount of money and abundance. That's what I'm calling in. Yes, I let money flow easily to and from me. Yes, call it in that money. Here's another thing you could do. You can actually like write this on a post-it and put it on your mirror so you're reminded to like repeat this. Some people actually put these affirmations in their wallet. Like right when you open it, you see it depending on like what your wallet is like and things like that. Yeah, and a deep like layer of this is like reflecting how have your past relationships impacted your relationship currently with money? Okay, we got another. I'm worthy of any abundance that comes my way. I'm open and allowing to any abundance that flows to me. I love that. Okay, 
So there's this concept and it's called attraction manifesting. And it's essentially like magnetizing money by being the authentic expression of yourself, right? So you can't manifest money if you're sitting there all closed, like all hiding, like afraid of sharing your gifts, afraid of sharing yourself, you know, because that's you also entering into low vibrational energy. So manifesting money is about you being expansive, right? Because the energy of money is going to connect and meet you where you're at. So the wider, more expansive, the more open you are to sharing your gifts, to being who you are, you will naturally magnetize and call in abundance for yourself. So our relationship with money is con connected to how our ancestors deal dealt with money. So I'm going to actually walk you guys this through this little worksheet that um, I actually is. Uh, it's in my money magic book, which is coming out soon, actually on Amazon, which I'm so excited about. Yay! <laughs> but, um, so if you guys have a pen and paper, um, let's do this activity together. So we're basically going to go through our relationship with money and kind of like reflect for a little bit. What is our mom's relationship with money? What is our dad's relationship with money? What are the pros and cons about their relationship with money? And how does this affect me? So basically, I want you to first step into the relationship with your mother. And take a moment just to think about how mom dealt with money. And you could just write down in your little book, in your, like, even in your notes on your iPhone or something, what are the pros with mom's relationship with money? Like, even mine. Like, my mom, like, I always remember, like, she, if she wanted something fancy, like, she would get it for herself to treat herself. Like, that's a good positive. A negative would be, like, sometimes we felt stressed for money when, like, my dad didn't give us money. Um, another positive was like the holidays were always big and we always like spent a lot. Like another negative though was like after we always, she would always make us feel a little guilty for spending more during the holidays, like stuff like that, you know? So just take a moment to think about like the positive and negative relationships that your mom had with money first. And just take a moment to reflect. And also if there's any events occurring, like when you're thinking about this, like also write this down. Okay. Now I want you guys to step into the same thing with your dad, thinking about your dad, who he is, what your relationship with with his with what his relationship with money has been like, um, the pros and the cons. So basically, you know, like for me myself, like there's been a lot of healing with my dad and relationship with money but he's also helped me in a lot of ways too later on in my life and just like also forgiveness and thinking about all of these concepts so just taking the time to kind of flow into this awareness and now yeah just really starting from like remembering your childhood growing up and if you're even if your parent was absent in your life like how that also impacted your relationship with money And now you kind of want to look at both of these and be like, what aspects did you actually receive from your parents' relationship with money? So I want you to take a moment and kind of look at these different qualities and you're like, damn, 
actually like sometimes I feel like I, I have like a scarcity mindset because of what we went through or, or sometimes like, um, I don't feel comfortable with spending because I have, you know, I remember when my mom would make me feel guilty about like when I spent money, like things like that. So take a moment to kind of connect the dots for yourself, you know, in your relationship with money. And if anyone wants to share as well, you can actually turn on your camera to discuss if you would like. And if you don't want to, that's okay. But like also, um, yeah, if you feel called to. Yay, Jeff, you can share. Um, I think um, what I've learned is that uh, I kind of inherited a, like, I realized it was just kind of like, I inherited some, like, generational traumas when it came to abundance and whatnot. Like, when it came to my dad, it was like, it was frustrating because things weren't going my way or, like, I want something now when I couldn't get it, or it's just like, I learned that, you know, last, because last month um, I was thinking about him and my grandfather. And I think it was one of those, like, I realized that we want certain things and sometimes we won't get it. We get frustrated, we get mad or something gets in our way. And it's kind of like, damn. But for me, it was like, because he was, he was the reason why I started my healing journey. He was like, he was pretty, pretty much telling me to be better than I was, than he was, and pretty practically my grandfather. So it was kind of like, look, I had to like, you know, because May was an active month. It was like a lot of things were happening. And then June kind of slowed down. And then I was like, you know what? It, it, it needed to be like a month of some downtime, rest. And then once July comes up, you just get to work in and just like, Things have gotten better. So that's what I got from my dad. Um, well, uh, from my mom, I think what I've learned was like, even today, like in the last couple of days is that there are times where I would sometimes buy things that I don't really need. And uh, it was kind of like, man, like I don't regret it. Like I'm like, damn, I didn't even buy that or anything. But yeah. last couple of, last couple of days, it's just like, I brought this like chips and this popcorn for me to eat. And I was walking home. And then I'm like, a part of me was like, do I really need this? Do I really need this? Then I just went back, just got the refund. I brought some like food, like some, some food that I used to buy when I was like back in the day. And I was like, that was more better. And then I went home and I was like, I'm good. I'm fine. And I think nowadays is like also fast food and also a lot of things where it's just like I'm not a recognition, yeah. Yeah, just like I don't really need this. Like I it's just yeah. like so so even today when I was like, oh should I buy this? Should I buy this? And then I was kind of like, you know what? Let's just buy this. And also to that point where like I'm gonna go to because you know Venus, I'm about to go to her party, so I'm yeah. like I don't really need to buy any, any food because I'm going to eat at her place and I'm going to eat at work. So I really don't have to spend money. So I think I just learned that I kind of low key inherited some of the things that my, you know, from my parents, but I just now learned to be a lot more, um, you know, conscious of that. Another thing I also really realized is I, and I used to low key kind of like say like, Oh, why does my mom have coupons? And then, as I got older, I was like, you know what? I get it now. Like, because coupons can do you a favor. I don't collect, I don't religiously really collect them. It's just like every time I see a coupon, I'm like, okay, that'll do me some good. And yes. so, yeah, it's just kind of learning to like break from that, you know, some of the habits they did. And now I'm just kind of like, all right, if I need it, I need it. And there's going to be some peaks, there are going to be some valleys, but you know, Things happen for a reason. 
Exactly. That's all about the awareness. So it's so powerful that you're able to kind of like examine these relationships with money and what you're unconsciously spending. You know, when you start to really look at your stuff and you're like, oh my God, I'm spending this here. I'm doing this here. It's like, all right, these are the blockages that are limiting me from the highest potential that I can achieve with money. And a lot of it sometimes is unconscious spending because we're so used to just like going to the store and getting this and getting that. And and it's like, all right, why did I need to get this, you know, and kind of like stopping yourself as you're making that purchase and thinking to yourself, do I really need this item, you know, but even then it's like, you know, did I used to go to the store with my parents and were they teaching me like, all right, when I go to the store, I always get one thing, you know, and it all adds up. Did anyone else want to share anything else? And you can also, yes. Queen. Yeah. I would like to share. Um, yes. I'm like truly just mind blown right now. It's crazy how guided I have been to be here in this moment, learning this from you. Oh, and that's so beautiful. Yeah, so what's coming to me is that I now know I am ready to heal my deepest challenge for my lineage, which is money because I am ready to be who I truly am. And that is what this is all just is bringing up for me. And it's just mind blowing. And I'm literally sitting here shots right now. Like, thank you for doing this work. Of course. Oh my God, that's so powerful. I'm so proud of you. Oh, that's all I wanted to share. <laughs> yes, that's the thing. Like when you just rise into it, the universe will literally open the doorway and it's up to you to take the opportunity, you know, like there's been so many crazy times where like I met my psychic mentor and all of this stuff. And it was like, because I was open, the universe matched me with exactly what I needed to see, what exactly what I needed to feel. And it's like, there's just so much potential when you step into this, you know? It's scary as hell, but I'm ready. <laughs> yes, hop in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, please share, Queen. So for me, a lot what has been coming up is a uh, uh, relationship with money and uh, how money is not evil. Because I grew up believing that if you are rich or if you have money, then uh, perhaps you're not a righteous good person. Mm -hmm. um so for me uh, i grew up very religious so for me it was like you have to uh remove yourself from material you cannot want material you need to be this person who doesn't need or want anything and uh, you know gives the money to church or you know whatnot so um i just realized these patterns and why money never <laughs> really stays you know <laughs> and, and <laughs> so that's my relationship and i'm trying to repair myself and repair my uh beliefs about money and, it's uh, so powerful because you know we don't realize how much we've been conditioned in different ways and money is actually a very healthy thing because one thing is that especially a lot of spiritual people have a bad relationship with money but the thing mm -hmm. is when we are the ones who have the money when we are the ones who have this endless abundance we're able to do so many beautiful things with that money you know, like there's been so many times where I've donated to people. Like I literally worked internationally in all of these different places. I worked with orphanages and I was able to give back to them, you know, and so many times where people came to me in need. And it's like, when you are that abundant person, you're able to pour back into the world in the way that is intended to other than let's say a person who's not spiritual and they're very close and they're like, Oh, this is my money. That's like a completely different interaction, you know, than being that person. And it's like, God gave me this money so that I can invest so that I can build so that I can um, make something beautiful of this earth and use it intentionally. Jeff. Yeah. Um, also, another thing I also realized was that I think, um, and I realized this um, after doing this clear this uh, block removal candle ritual, in which um, I it was mostly over clarity. I realized that you know, 
why like I was like the reason why a lot of the abundance that finally came now was because I wasn't healing from I was I wasn't really healing from like the generational trauma. I wasn't really like like also it was like I want these certain things, but you're still stuck or still stuck in the past or still have these these mindsets. And also another thing I realized was that the abundance will come and go. Like when like I guess I wear crystals. Like I wear abund I was wearing abundance crystals, like trying to get that abundance in. And then I realize now I wear the crystals that I need to wear, like the ground crystals, because I can't I got to a point of the abundance will come and go. So but as long as you're grounded and like doing everything with love and your heart's in the right place, the abundance will come naturally. It happened recently. And I was like, oh, yeah, so I'll just do that. Just have as long as your heart is in the right place, the abundance will come. Exactly. I believe that's a huge part of it, you know, and what you're basically also tapping into is like you being your authentic expression just being yourself and trusting that that magnetism will come but if you're in a place of anxiety if you're in a place of all right like you know just stuck mentally then that abundance can't flow freely yes thank you for that insight Jeff so basically what we're going to do is like we're going to actually move into the healing together so if you guys aren't in a comfortable place, just take a moment to get in a comfortable place. So it's going to be a deep meditation. But before we do this, I'm going to talk about my offerings. I usually do this at the end, but because sometimes people just go into a deep place during these meditations, during these activations, I want to tell you about my offerings first, just because some people even fall asleep. And I want you guys to honor your space, you know, wherever you feel like going after this healing, sometimes it arises a lot, you know, but what I recommend is after we do the healing together, just to take some time with your notebook, write down what came up, really integrate with your experience, because what we're going to be doing is actually going to your tree of abundance, and we're going to be tapping in to you examining your tree, seeing if there's any blockages anywhere, even you might see your uh, your parents as well in your relationship with them, your great grandparents, it could be something like that. I don't know what's going to come up. It's all up to spirit and the universe. So yes, yeah, so we're going to hop into that. But let me share you with you guys my offerings first. So if you guys are interested in working with me in any capacity, you could always message me on Instagram, or even send me an email. Um, you guys are now in the Soul Mastery University email setting. That's how you guys like got into the Zoom. So we basically always have courses that we're hosting. Some of them are about abundance. Some of them are about stepping into your power as a spiritual entrepreneur. If you're in New York, I have two in-person events in New York and I'm in the midst of planning another. So um, one of them is actually this Saturday. It's the Business Babe Retreat. And if you're a spiritual entrepreneur that's trying to step into their power, like this is literally for you. It's at this place called the Goddess Loft. And essentially what we're doing is we're branding your business I'm teaching you tools and techniques that I've learned to create a six-figure business for myself online. I'm going to be teaching you guys about AI and how to utilize AI to like make ease and flow in your business. We're going to be doing manifestation spells together. It's 1111 to 333. So it's a four hour workshop and it's going to be super intensive. Like you're just going to walk away with so much. So if you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you're in New York, it's going to be in Garden City. Let me know because it's going to be next level. I'm so excited about it. Then the next thing I have is Psychic Development Day. And this is with my mentor, Lynn. So if you're um, someone who's interested in developing your own psychic gifts, you want to give readings to other people, you want to do really deep healings with people, this is your calling. This is going to be in Huntington in New York. And it's from 111 to 555. So the thing about me is that I only live in New York for part of the year. The rest of the year, I live in Costa Rica. So when I'm here, I only do limited events. So I'm here in New York for one month, 
and then I'm going to go back to Costa Rica. I actually have a retreat in Costa Rica in August 10th through the 15th. So I'm so excited about that. It's a goddess retreat. It's about embodiment. It's about trauma releasing. It's about waterfalls. It's about sea caves, enjoying yourself and also connecting to the indigenous people there. So we're going to be doing cacao ceremonies with the indigenous people as well. So let's throw throw that one in. Okay. Then the two offerings that are like, um, that I'm really like stepping into is like one of them is that I do intuitive healing. So we're about to do a healing together. This is just a mini healing and it's a group healing. If you guys are interested in something a lot more in depth, you have a lot of things coming up. I do Akashic record readings. I do um, soul healings. I do basically also business synergy sessions. So essentially what a business synergy session is, is if you're an entrepreneur, you want to identify your blockages. You want to work with me to like figure out those abundance channels. I do like an hour and a half, like specialized business session as well. And that's powerful. And then I have a mastermind coming up with my mentor. So a mastermind is essentially like a group program. This is a large six month program that will help people step into their power, set up their spiritual business. You're going to walk away from this with a website with like all of your abundance channels set up for multiple streams of income. But this is like a super intensive, like think of it like a master's level program to like get you ready like we're going to be meeting weekly it's going to be all intensive it's going to be like helping you to plan for you the business for the rest of your life like we're going to be going into every single aspect of setting up your business for yourself your marketing plan your strategy your branding your vision um your date your daily offerings monthly offerings like and just have everything set up for you so that's the whole thing so yeah that's my offerings and if you guys have any questions like I said I'm accessible you can add me on Instagram you can add me on Facebook I love having conversations even if you wanted to like you know just talk to me for like 10 minutes or something at some point like I totally do that too just to see like what's best for you with where you're at you know send me a voice memo or something so yeah and kings that are here. <laughs> okay, so we're about to hop into the healing. So like I said, it's going to be an intensive activation. And this is intended for you to help heal any blockages that are preventing you from accessing your abundance channels. Um, so I recommend you to stay sitting um, not driving if possible, but I mean, if you're sitting in your car, that's totally fine too. Like you could totally do that, but it's going to be next level activating. If you guys are on the email list, I'm also going to send the recording after for this as well. And it's super powerful. And yeah, I'm just gonna, yes, you can lay down definitely. And what I recommend, like I said before, is like, after this, just like take some time to write, see what came up, See what the universe is really showing you in this um, so that you can step into the full activation for yourself. Um, If you feel called to turn off your camera, you can as well. This is my Instagram, just in case you don't have it. It's at Alicia Munion. Um, That's me. (laughs) Yes. Let's do this. All right, so I want you guys to just take a moment in getting comfortable in your seat. And you can begin by closing your eyes. Just taking this moment now to place your awareness within your body. Taking this moment now just to tune your consciousness inside yourself, inside your body. We're going to begin now with three deep cleansing breaths. We're going to begin with a deep inhale into the nose, calling in this white positive light, calling in this beautiful energy into the body, feeling this activation, feeling this light working through your body. And now, ah, ah, ah. 
Just taking a moment to exhale, to let go and release any energy from inside the body. And once again, we're going to do this deep inhale into the body, a deep breath in through the nose, calling in this light, calling in this energy, calling in this power into the body, feeling this beautiful activation, this light, this energy working its way through and calling its power into your lungs, into this beautiful energy inside of you. And ah, breathing all the way out through the mouth, letting go and releasing anything that no longer serves you, tuning you into this activation, tuning you into this power within yourself, taking this moment to tune back into the body. And once again, we're going to do the deepest inhale in, but this time filling our belly all the way with this golden white light, all the way in with this golden air. A deep inhale in, all the way into the belly. A little deeper now, all the way extending. And a deep exhale out from the mouth. Just taking a moment to find this beautiful rhythm, this beautiful cadence with your breath. I'm taking this moment now to feel this beautiful white cleansing light working its way down from the top of your head right now in this moment. Taking a moment to feel this light, this power working its way down from the top of your head into your body. Taking this moment to feel this beautiful light, this beautiful power working through you now. Taking this moment to feel your power, to feel your potential working its way into your body, taking a moment to feel this activation now, this beautiful sacred energy working its way down towards the top of your head now. Taking this moment to tune into this energy and feel this beautiful white cleansing light working its way down from the top of your head. Taking this moment to feel this light and this power working its way through the top of your head, allowing you to activate, allowing you to open up the channel to your intuition. Taking this moment now to feel this beautiful light, this beautiful energy working its way down through the top of your head, activating, releasing, and opening up all channels of abundance, all channels of activation all power and energy into your body now, taking this moment now to feel your potential, to feel this beautiful sacred energy working through you now. And taking this moment now to feel this energy working its way down further now, down into the area in the middle of your forehead. Taking this moment now to feel this beautiful energy, to feel this beautiful light, working into the middle of your forehead now, allowing you to tap into this beautiful space of abundance, this beautiful activation, working through here now, taking this moment now to feel this power, to feel this light breaking through your third eye now, opening and activating into your space, taking this moment to feel your third eye opening more deeply now, being open to receiving, being open to perceiving, being open to see more deeply into the avenues of abundance that you have clearly unfolding before you now. Taking this moment to feel this light working through more deeply now, down past the tip of your nose, down the tip of your lips, down your chin and now into your throat area. Taking this moment to feel this light working its way through your throat area now, allowing you to clear out and release any blockages that you have right now, preventing you from speaking your truth, from speaking yourself into your power. Taking this moment now to exhale through the mouth and just let go any time that you felt like you couldn't share your voice, any time that you felt restricted towards being yourself. Taking this moment now to exhale through the mouth, just letting go and releasing any blockages here right now. Wow.
Uh, just a big exhale out, letting go and releasing anytime you felt restricted from sharing your gifts. Uh, anytime you felt restricted in speaking words of kindness to yourself. Uh, taking a moment to breathe out and exhale anytime that you felt disempowered from sharing your voice, from sharing yourself, from sharing your magic, just breathing out through the mouth and releasing. Ah. Taking this moment to fully let go and release. Taking this moment to step into the power within your voice now. And taking this moment now to feel this light working through your heart now. Taking a moment to feel this beautiful, loving abundance enter into your heart space now. Taking a moment to enter this light into your beautiful, sacred heart. Opening the self-love, this potential, this abundance, this energy now. And feeling into this power within your heart space now. And opening your heart to this beautiful potential, this beautiful energy, and this beautiful abundance within your heart now. Feeling this overflowing abundance of energy, this overflowing abundance of love working through your heart right now in this moment. Taking this moment, tapping and tuning into the sacred heart now. And taking this moment to let go and release if there's any heartbreak, any trauma that you're holding on to right now in your heart. Just take this moment to step more deeply into your heart space. Feeling into your heart, feeling into your power and potential now. Just taking a moment to step into the beautiful divinity within your heart now. And taking this moment now as your heart fills to the brim with love, just stretching outward into the universe with your loving potential, with your self-love avenues and vehicles within your heart. And just tapping into your potential of abundance, into your potential of love and magic within you now. And taking this moment now to feel this light working its way down further now, working its way to the area right above your belly button. Taking a moment to feel this light working through your beautiful solar plexus. Stepping you into your own channels of self-love, into your own channels of soul mastery into your own channels of your purpose feeling this light working through and tapping you into this beautiful space of light and healing now and taking this moment now to feel this light working down further now down into your sacral chakra taking this moment to tap into your creativity to tap into your sensual energy and creativity, feeling these energies working through you now and tapping into this beautiful potential and abundance here now. And taking this moment now to feel this light working its way down more deeply, down past your knees, down to your feet and wrapping around your feet in a cord of light. Anchoring you down to Mother Earth, Mother Gaia, this beautiful place in which you've chosen to walk through. You can now feel the energy stemming from the top of your head, working all the way down to the bottom of your feet. Taking this moment now to feel this beautiful and divine connection now, stepping you up into the universe and down to the bottom of your feet. And taking this moment now, as you can now feel this energy flowing freely through you, taking this moment to now imagine yourself walking down this beautiful path in nature, taking this moment to feel yourself walking through this path, stepping in to this beautiful sanctuary of healing. As you begin to walk down this path, you begin to reflect on how resilient you are and all of the things that you've overcome in your life. As you begin to walk down this path, you enter into this reflection of who you are, 
and how you stepped into this magical energy within yourself. As you continue to walk down further in this pathway, you begin to step into your potential of healing. You begin to step into this beautiful avenue of magic that's unfolding before you. As you begin to approach the end of this pathway, you begin to see for yourself this beautiful, expansive tree that's waiting for you. This is your tree of abundance. You take a moment to step in front of this tree to just feel this potential, to feel this energy coming from this tree now. Taking a moment to step into this beautiful sacred energy and feeling the power of this tree calling you in deeper now. And as you take a moment to connect to this beautiful sacred tree and feeling this beautiful power now, you take this moment to step in to feeling this energy of abundance coming towards you, beckoning you in closer now. As you begin to examine your tree of abundance, I want you to take a moment to notice and recognize, are there any places on your tree that are damaged? Are there any places on your tree where the roots aren't fully connected and absorbing nutrients? I want you to take this moment now just to run your hands along this tree to begin to notice where are the areas of your tree of abundance that need more work? Where is your self-worthiness being tested? Where are you questioning yourself and the abundance that you deserve? Taking this moment now to step into this energy. Step into your beautiful potentiality here. And as you begin to connect to this tree, I want you to begin to notice that one of your parents or both begin to approach you as you step into healing this beautiful tree. I want you to take a moment to communicate with your parents how they've impacted your relationship with abundance. Taking this moment to consciously recognize and communicate with them with how your relationship of abundance has been tested. Taking this moment, step in now. Feel this energy, feel this beautiful healing coming from this awareness. And I want you to take a moment to now forgive your parents for any pain that they caused. And if you're not ready yet, that's okay. Just take a moment to send them light, send light to any pain that you experienced. And then in the sending of light now, I want you to begin to place your hands on the tree and you can begin to send your tree of abundant light, light to heal any wounds, light to heal any breakages. And as you're doing this, I want you to visualize the highest potential version of yourself, the version of yourself that is fully abundant the version of yourself that has called in the wealth that they deserve, the version of yourself that is filled with the money that you desire. And I want you to claim for yourself now an exact number that you want to manifest and create for yourself by the end of the year. Take a moment to actualize this. Take a moment to step into what this looks like. Take a moment to step in 
to what this feels like. Take a moment to step in to creating this number for yourself and who you need to be. Take a moment to see this higher potential version of yourself. Take a moment to see how you've dedicated yourself. Take a moment to see how you've invested in yourself mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Take a moment to embody what this feels like now. And feel this activation as you continue to place your hands on this tree running through your veins now. And taking this moment now, I want you to integrate this power, this potential into your body. Just taking a moment to activate this energy inside your body now, feeling every side of your body being activated, working from your hands into all aspects of your being now, calling in this abundance that you deserve, calling in this beautiful energy into yourself. You can begin now just to begin to call yourself back into this body. You can begin by wiggling your toes and wiggling your fingers. Just taking this moment now to step into this reality for yourself. Beginning this activation into the physical body by wiggling your toes, your fingers. Moving your shoulders back. Taking this moment now to begin to open your eyes and welcome yourself back to this physical space. And whenever you feel ready, you can begin to open your eyes. And as you welcome yourself back, I invite you to be very gentle with yourself. You can begin just to grab a pen and paper or even your notes in your phone just to write down any messages that you received, any activations that occurred. Just taking this moment now to welcome yourself back. Feel yourself back into the body. Just take this moment to unwind, just to feel into this energy. And whenever you feel ready, you can share if you would like. Or if you're just in another universe, you could just stay in that other universe. I thank you for joining me for this class. I hope it's been so activating. And do you feel inspired and motivated to create the abundance for yourself that you desire? And that you're more aware of any blockages that could be from preventing you from truly stepping into your power? Oh, Jeff, you can share. Um, I think um, it's, it's funny that uh, it was like, um, I felt like it was like the tree. I felt like the tree was reminiscent of my grandfather because um, you know i kind of like saw like the first picture i saw of him he was sitting by a tree and um i was thinking about the family tree where i did not you know fulfill it pro fulfill it because my paternal side my dad never wanted to talk about like his dad or his mom wow. so i think it was like when i think of the tree I was like, I think of I like, I think of him. It was more like he was kind of like in a way between now and like last month. He was, it was like he was telling me, look, I didn't do like how I tried to get my abundance. What wasn't the most like the most uh best way, but um, I did uh, try to do it my way and. Um, Look, it wasn't the best way to go about things, but you're at least trying to work hard for it. Continue to do that. Do it your way. And when you do, 
you know, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. So I think just like basically me and my grandfather basically had wanted that abundance, wanted things and similar like my dad. But I think I also realized that we had to work. I had to work hard for it. I had to say, no, I had to do it. Yeah. Right so, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Yay. Is there anyone else that would like to share anything? If not, that's totally fine, too. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys are interested in anything Saturday, if you're in New York and able to come. By the way, that workshop is not just for women. It's for men, too. But it is at the Goddess Laugh. I literally have, like, three guys signed up, though. So it's like a business retreat for women, for especially if you're a spiritual entrepreneur. But there's people who aren't spiritual entrepreneurs that just want to learn more about marketing, too. But yeah, or if you guys are interested in a one-on-one, -on -one, um, definitely reach out. Let me know. I have some availability. I do readings, healings um, through Zoom and also in person in New York if you're in New York at the moment. Or if you want to come to Costa Rica, still have one slot available for August for the Costa Rica retreat. So, yes, I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much. For coming. If you guys have any questions or anything, reach out to me. Thank you guys so much for coming. If you guys have any questions or anything. Oh, did you want to did you want to say anything, Maria? Okay. I wanted to ask you uh, about the retreat, but I will reach out to you separately. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. That sounds perfect. Amazing. Okay. Yay. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Be safe. Sending you lots of love.